last two series we have completed your what is behavioral control what is pheromone what are the different types of pheromone and what is allelochemicals and type of allelochemicals so after understanding all of those things now we will see how we can use those pheromones or those allelochemicals against your insect that means for your pest management how we can use those different kind of uh, your behavioral response or behavioral chemicals against insect so out of that some four categories are there so first one is your insect attractant that means how we can use those insect attractant against different pest so what is insect attractant okay what are those things chemicals that cause insects to move or to make oriented movements towards their source are called as what your insect attractant that means whatever the thing is there when you apply this one insect will direct their orientation towards this particular target compound or target component so this one will be called as what your insect attractant okay they influence both your taste and smell that means both gustatory and olfactory receptor or sensil of the insect okay now coming to your type of attractant how many kind of attractants are there one is that word your pheromone already we have completed sex pheromone then your aggregation pheromone okay mating pheromone different kind of pheromones we have completed so that one is what your oviposition pheromone okay those are your what pheromones then second one is your natural food lures that means natural compounds okay towards which the insect will come or gets attracted and we can use them for pest management third one is your oviposition lure and last one is your poison bait so one by one we will discuss but you should know that as we have completed the pheromone now we won't discuss about it and you can uh, check those videos in the description or uh, in this series it is there you can go through that what is pheromone and all so we will start from your natural food lures okay so what are those things these are the chemicals present in plant or animals host that attract the insect for feeding okay that means suppose this plant is there some plant is there okay towards which the insect is coming okay this one is what natural food lure natural foods you can tell but what is you uh, mean by this lure that means we will do one thing some non host crop will take and we will tie this pheromone over here or we will tie this attractant over here so then what will happen this insect will be disrupted from growing going to its host and it will be attracted to a place where it is not their host that one is what your lure okay natural food lures will be prepared they stimulate generally your olfactory receptor that means through smell they generally attract those particular pest some examples are there you see some natural food lures like your for pest of cruciferous plant isothiocyanate from the seeds of crucifer uh, plants uh, for onion flies okay that is your propyl mercaptan from onions for bark beetle that is your turpins from the bark from house fly those are your uh, for house fly those are your sugar and molasses for cabbage butterfly pieris brassica that is your sinigrin towards which they are generally attracted these are the natural source some synthetic uh, things are prepared or synthetic chemicals are prepared which also attract your particular target pest which can be used in different kind of lure and poison bait you see suppose methyl eugenol this is a synthetic compound that attracts your oriental fruit fly that is your dacus dorsalis then q lure okay that is for melon fruit fly then trimed lure that is your mediterranean fruit fly okay ceratitis capitata okay this three okay they will attract different three kind of your fruit flies then this geraniol and eugenol those are effective for your japanese beetle popilia japonica so these things may come in the exam you must know like question will come methyl eugenol is a attractant for which pest option will be there like oriental fruit fly melon fruit fly mediterranean fruit fly so many other examples may be there options may be there mcq so at that time you have to 
चूज द राइट आंसर अंडरस्टूड वाट क्वेश्चन में कम फ्रॉम दिस दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दिस थिंग्स एनी थिंग मे कम इन द एग्जाम ओके नाउ कमिंग टू योर ओभी पोजिशन लियोर ओके ओभी पोजिशन दैट मीन्स लियोर फॉर ओवी पोजिशन दैट मीन्स दीज आर द केमिकल्स विच विल अट्रैक्ट द अडल्ट फीमेल फॉर एग लिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू सी पी मिथाइल एसिटोफिन पी मिथाइल एसिटोफिन दैट विल अट्रैक्ट द अडल्ट फीमेल ऑफ राइस टेम्बोर टू ओविपोजिट बिकॉज यू सी सपोज प्लांट लिफ लैमिना इज देर इन केस ऑफ राइस दे विल बी केयरिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर केमिकल दैट इज योर P methyl estrophenone for for which what what is is happening the 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 rice rice adult female is coming and laying its egg at the tip of the leaves okay so so you can use this this pheromone in some other non host plant so that this female rice temporer won't go this place or if also go so many will go to this particular non target site where this opposition lure has been treated Some part they can be disrupted. Okay, managed. Then last one is your poison bait. No need to tell. In the, it, so many places we have discussed this poison bait. Okay, these are the mixture of food lures and insecticides. Everything will be added. But here what will happen? You see, in case of poison bait means you should know what is active ingredient. That means these are the compounds which are toxic in nature. Second is your carrier. Okay, where the toxic one will be mixed. And the third one is your what? In that matter, that is what your insect attractant. That means you see, suppose you are managing the rodents. So what you are doing? Suppose you give some rice. In rice, we'll apply some uh, toxicant, uh, retex or whatever, the rat killer. Okay. No doubt, some may be killed, but we cannot guarantee that the rat will come and feed on it. Yes or no? Because there only carrier is there and the active ingredient is there. but if you add some meat syrup or whatever the curry you prepare in meat and you just mix it uh, that one with the rice then what will happen definitely they will attract the rats so that one is your what insect or pest attractant there their use is there understood so these are the important things so what to remember here as you discussed what is attractant you should know but what you have to remember those example okay here you see this example you must remember okay these are the things you must remember and it may come in the exam and this one is also important p methyl estrophenon it may come in the exam for rice tamper or egling okay next is your what insect repellent okay insect repellent so what is this insect repellent chemicals use or chemicals which cause insect to move away from their source that means just reverse of your attractant that means suppose this is the repellent means what will happen whatever the insect are there they will repel away from that treated area which is known as what your insect repellent either they will move away from the source or they will prevent the insect damage to the plants that means they will make this plant in such a way that or they will make this treated area or the treated compound in such a way that those compound will be either unattractive or unpalatable that cannot be taken up or that is offensive also okay that one is what your insect repellent so now coming to what should be the desirable trait of a good repellent okay what are those things what should be there what should be the characteristics of a good repellent you see that must be effective for a longer period of time on a wide range of insect yes or no suppose you see today you have applied the repellent and after two days suppose what will happen it will evaporate so what will happen now use yes or no that must act for a longer period of time that means weathering effect will be less yes or no whatever the environmental factors are there their uh, what adverse effects should be less on this particular chemical otherwise again natural laws will be there okay these two points over next one is what on a wide range of insect they should be broad spectrum okay otherwise if they will be specific means uh, that will be having less efficiency it should be broad spectrum then what is that and this should not be toxic okay or or irritating to the men or animals 
that means suppose you are applying this odomos what is that that is also a repellent uh, even we are applying it on our skin or sometimes on our cloth okay that means this should not taint the uh, clothes or they should not uh, be harmful for the clothes they should not be harmful for our skin wherever, wherever you are applying okay so this should be also the qualities of a insect repellent okay now now first coming to this physical repellent okay some are physical repellent some are chemical repellent one by one we will discuss first coming to this physical repellent you see contact contact repellent that means whatever you studied in the synthetic organic insecticide and all that is your dust granules water oil water oil okay leaf hair spines and waxes okay they will influence the surface texture texture of the plants to produce a disagreeable effect on the tactile sense organ of the insect that means whenever you are applying those uh, repellents when come in contact with the insect they will have adverse effect or some disagreeable effect on the insect how through the contact stimuli that means through the tactile or mechanoreceptor organs second one is your heart auditory that means when you just practice some kind of highly amplified sound then what will happen this will also affect or affect your insect in a repelling way that means they will try to go away from that place also in case of human being also okay that is a uh, what uh, consciousness of uh, any auditory receptor organs yes or no they will try to go away from that place okay uh, just like your example mosquito pyrolid moth flies even your birds okay they will also go away from the this high amplitude uh, auditory devices then visual okay generally what happens this blue uh, yellow, yellow color okay not blue yellow color that is very least attractive that means always they are repulsive in nature some exceptions like your for those insect uh, which are uh, managed through yellow sticky trap like white fly thrips, jasid, whatever, but generally these are very least attractive. You should not use any blue colors because that will be attractant. Yellow color are repellent. Some exception, with some exception. Then excitatory, okay. That means this pyrethrum, DDT, BHC. What they will do? They will trigger some hyper excitation inside the insect okay very hyper excitation so for which what will happen they uh, insect whatever are affected by that excitation they will try to move away or force to leave from the treated surface okay then coming to the feeding like your substances that inhibit the feeding in the insect okay those are also some kind of your physical repellent but more specifically it will be your antifeedant we will discuss in the next एक्सरसाइज पहले बताओ ये किसने फेंका किसने फेंका लाइफ है ब्रेक बनता है नेस्ले गुड फूड गुड लाइफ देन नेक्स्ट वन इज योर केमिकल रिपेलेंट्स यू सी these are the chemicals that affect the tactile mechanoreceptor olfactory smell gustatory your taste receptor of the insect and could be plant origin or synthetic it may be plant origin or it may be synthetically prepared chemicals which will repel the insect okay so what are those you see repellents of plant origin some examples you should remember okay like your this oils of citronella plant citronella oil generally they are the mosquito repellent we use in odomas then extracts of lemongrass, Symbopogon nudus that contains your citronellol and geraniol, okay, main, main constituent, generally used in the uh, different kind of sticks and all, okay, then the spirethrum also in low concentration, they act as repellent, but in a higher concentration, they will act as killer, so, yes or no, then also cloths uh, af uh, applied with your pyrethroids are effective against your different insect vectors like adders aegypti okay mosquito and all okay so these are the natural chemical repellents then coming to your synthetic repellents okay dithyltoluamide protects uh, the bearer against your mosquito ticks 
flares inviting flies this diethyl toluamide okay one of the synthetic repellent some other are your boldex mixture dimethyl phthalate indalone okay some other are there you see in this table it has been mentioned okay what are the insect and what are the repellents okay that means for you see for mosquito and other blood sucking insect dimethyl phthalate for mites jiggers benzyl benzoate for crawling insect that is your trichlorobenzene for phytophagous insect bordeaux mixture okay for wood feeders pentachlorophenol for fabricators naphthalein and mothballs whatever we keep in the our godrays or wherever they are uh, storing the cloths there generally we will use this naphthalein ball yes or no in odia gandha corpora whatever so for bees smoke generally used for handling of the bees then mosquitoes dimethyl phthalate that one we already have done that is your oil of citronella then cloth moth that is your naphthalein and paradichlorobenzene ball we are using okay cloth moth for cloth moths then your termites pentachlorophenol then your foliage feeder bordeaux mixture and tetra methyl thiuram disulfide okay for foliage feeder we can use then homoptera pimetrozine this is a feeding suggestant as you know from novel insecticide pimetrozine okay then mosquitoes flies and fleas sucking and diethyl m toluamide toluamide okay deed okay and diethyl m toluamide okay so these are the synthetic uh, chemical repellents okay we can use some are uh, natural like this oil of citronella natural okay so these are the example of your repellents now next we'll go to understand your the next chapter that is your insect antifidant okay what is that insect antifidant that means here you see generally they are not responsible for killing the insect but they will help in inhibiting the feeding process okay but does not kill the insect that means they will remain on the treated surface they will come to the treated area they will remain on the treated area but they won't feed that means they will die due to starvation because they cannot recognize that this is their feeding material getting my point that's why they are generally known as your feeding deterrents or gustatory repellents or rejectants these are their synonym okay so three main site of sense of taste in insect is located in their mouth on the tarsi on the leg and on the antenna okay so distortion of this normal function of those neurons which perceive the phagostimulating compounds that means these are the compounds which will just make the disruption in this nervous conduction of this or uh, just recognizing the particular uh, food part whatever the food is there for them they cannot recognize that one okay because these uh, antifidants will block those gen uh, normal uh, response of those uh, phago, uh, phago stimulating uh, what uh, muscles or whatever the compounds are there they will affect that one so now coming to your group of antifidants you see some major groups are there like your triazines okay triazine that is a uh, staly acetanilide it is a odorless and tasteless solid and compound which is not phytotoxic they are not phytotoxic in nature and it will inhibit feeding of most chewing or uh, insect okay that means whatever the chewing insect is there for them this acetanilide which is the compound belonging to triazine groups are antifidant similarly you see for organotins okay for organotins that is your triphenylene acetate that is the organotin bristan okay this is the earliest one so they have antifidant effect on the foliage feeding insect such as your cotton leaf worm or collard potato beetle etc similarly your carbamates like your aprocarbor propulsor they are systemic in nature okay they also uh, inhibit the feeding of your mexican beetle collard potato beetle japanese beetle generally the uh, whatever the coleopteran beetle and weevils okay this is a system uh, what aprocarb propulsor this is the systemic antifidant for bowl weevil anthonomus grandis of which crop cotton okay now next one is your some botanical extract botanical 
your you can tell antifidant okay so here you can see so many groups are there first is your pyrethrum okay they are not only insecticide but at small doses they act as antifidant but at higher doses they act as killer contact poison okay now for glossina it is highly effective certify glossina okay then your margosan neem they are also uh, effective uh, your antifidant they have antifidant action neem plant okay first reported by this uh, s pradhan okay 1962 for this desert locust then apple factor okay what is apple factor you see very interesting thing is there okay in case of apple one genus of apple that is your mala species they will produce a specific phenolic compound antifidant which is the florigen okay what this florigen is do this is uh, what interesting this florigen acts as aphids but non apple feeding aphids that means for non apple feeding aphids like mysis persicae this florigen act as your antifidant but for the apple aphid apple only aphid erisma lanzerum those are not antifidant because those will affect the plant but for non apple feeding aphids these act as your what your antifidant which is known as your, your what apple factor this is very very important from exam point of view okay next is your solanum alkaloids like your tomatin solanin they reduce the feeding of potato leaf upper impasca divestans then coming to your several other substances like your non essential amino acid tannin lignins okay others also act as your uh, specific antifidants but these are not that much of importance okay apple factor is very very important try to remember now coming to the advantages and disadvantages okay what are the advantages they only affect the phytophagous insect but do not harm the beneficial insect because they are generally specific species specific and is the pest is not killed okay its parasite and predator continue to feed on it yes or no because you see the pest is not killed either repelling away or attracted it to some non host crops or they are just sitting there but not feeding that means the insect is not dying the pest is not dying that means those non pest those natural enemies which are feeding on that target pest they won't harm because they are getting their food okay this is also a, uh, advantage is yes or no and these are non phytotoxic also or and neither they uh, create any kind of pollution hazards so these are the advantages what is the disadvantage generally they are only effective against your chewing pest okay okay for sucking pest these are not that much effective only for chewing pest it has been proved they are effective second is in your what new growth of the plant are not protected suppose one plant is there up to this side and you have applied the chemical up to this portion only so definitely what will happen the plant will grow okay at that time what will happen this particular area won't be containing this your whatever the attractant repellent antifidant whatever but if that is systemic like your propulsor at that time it is not a disadvantage but rest it will be a disadvantage for non systemic insect repellent attractant or whatever okay so these are some of the disadvantages you see the last one is your insect move to untreated parts or other plant and damage them that means suppose some other uh, other areas are there which is not treated okay this is treated but this is not treated so definitely what will happen repel from this one but attracted to this person and they will cause damage similarly suppose some other plants are there where that is not treated immediately they will go towards those plant and they can damage those particular crops okay so these are the some of the disadvantages of this antifidant and uh, all others okay so they are not effective enough to become a sole control measure there must be a integrated approach integrated management approach then only the pest management is possible solely they cannot manage the particular pest okay so thank you we have completed all of these things uh, so what i am telling okay starting from the beginning you see 
what you need to remember this what is behavior control for understanding infochemical this greek word okay and this uh, categorization like intraspecific interspecific which one is pheromone which one is allochemical and this uh, positive negative positive these things okay you need to remember okay pheromone who has given the term pheromone who has isolated the term pheromone okay what is the greek word what are the origin of this pheromone ferrin and hormone okay what is primer what is releaser with some example these are important then uh, of male of female how they are categorized was exogenous like your uh, which male produces this sex pheromone okay such kind of things will come these things are important okay again this pheromone from different insect these are also important okay then uh, aggregation pheromone those are not that much important but still this alarm pheromone that is important then elomon caromon cinnamon apneomon these are important because uh, examples may come and which one is uh, getting the benefit those things may come and who has coined the term things like that may come okay here this table that is important similarly in case of repellent also this tables and some other examples are important okay in case of antifitan these are important only groups and example and this apple factor this is also important okay so these are the things you need to cover up in this behavioral control so basically this uh, series is completed in a three part video okay uh, so try to understand and if any kind of doubt is there you can ask okay thank you have a nice day